Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a special episode of Bad for Health Entertainment. I'm Tom, and tonight I am joined by the illustrious panel, the wrestling guru himself, Mr. Richie Rogers, the wrestling guru. How are you, my friend? Doing good, Tom. How are you doing? Very well. We are joined also by award-winning filmmaker for his films such as Voorhees, Night of the Beast, Alone, Masquerade, and working as an actor in the upcoming Batman Heart of Ice film as Mr. Victor, Dr. Victor Freeze himself. We're talking to filmmaker Jason Pitts. How are you tonight, my friend? I'm doing great, Tom. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Also joined by the horror shark himself, Mr. Brian Gatto, Mr. 103,000 subscribers on YouTube, working on his next novel. How are you, Mr. Brian Gatto? I'm good. Always keeping tabs on my subscribers, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I keep tabs on all the little details. Also joining us tonight, legendary comic book writer, best known for his work on Daredevil, Nick Fury, Hardware, West Coast Avengers 38, and also Hellraiser and Pinhead, Mr. D.G. Chichester. How are you tonight, my friend? I'm good, Tom. I think that last uh, credit is all that matters for the evening, so that's right. <laughs> stick tonight, with that one. Tonight we are talking <laughs> heavily about the creation of Clive Barker's that originated in the Hellbound Heart. We're talking about the man or woman of the hour, Pinhead. We're reviewing the 2022 Hellraiser film that just debuted on Hulu this past October the 7th. Distributed by Disney, mind you. Let's go, let's get that out of the way. Hellraiser. I, I am looking forward to Pinhead walking around uh, the Disney parks myself. I think that's <laughs> going to be great. You know, It's going to be phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It depends where the little yeah. mousey is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pin, Pinhead is uh, the new Disney princess. Yeah, I, I think it's, it, that's the new best. That was one of the best lines I've heard. Pinhead is the yeah. new Disney princess. It's a brave new world in 2022. <laughs> uh, before we get into the movie, though, I want to take a step back to you specifically, DG, and talk about your first interactions with the character and possibly Clive Barker. Can you go into that a little bit on how you got the gig editing uh, and writing Hellraiser and subsequently Pinhead? Sure. I'm not going to take up your, your whole show with, with a history lesson, but yeah. essentially I was an editor at uh, Epic Comics, uh, Marvel Comics, uh, mostly creator-owned division, but also uh, known for higher end and more mature comics. Archie Goodwin was the editor-in-chief. Archie Goodwin's a legend in comics and also a legend in horror comics. He'd uh, worked on a lot of the Warren titles, Eerie and Creepy. I was a big horror fan. And was always jonesing for, we should do a horror comic, Archie. You know, you got history. I, I love this area. Can we do it? And Archie was always, uh, calm down, kid. Horror comics don't sell. And he was, he was right. They, they really don't sell in comparison to other things. Uh, you need a hook. Anthologies just don't sell on their own. Well, it happened that in Marvel being passed around to various and different places, at one point Marvel was purchased by New World Pictures. New World Pictures were the producers of the Hellraiser films. And um, a guy who would become a good friend of mine, Eric Saltzgaber, was in their foreign licensing department, was a good friend of Clive Barker's and knew that Clive had an interest in comics. So Clive came in to the Epic offices in New York and got together with Archie and uh, and they had a meeting you know, in their office, mysterious meeting about uh, puzzle boxes, no doubt. And uh, and Clive left and, and Archie came out and said, be careful what you wish for, Dan, because you just got it. We're going to do a horror anthology because the hook is um, we've got uh, we've got Clive Barker's name and we've got this known property Hellraiser. And that's going to be our hook. So uh, from that point, uh, we had the Hellbound Heart novel or novella. We had the first movie. Second movie had just come out, maybe uh, or was about to come out. Um, so there wasn't a lot beyond that. What are you going to base this whole anthology on? So. Uh, myself and Clive and Archie, uh, this guy Eric Saltzgaber and another horror author named Phil Nutman uh, got together and we started to have these idea sessions to blow out the world of Hellraiser. Like what 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 happens beyond what we've seen in the movies? What does it all mean? And we developed that into a, a kind of a Bible and that really launched this anthology, which we wanted to be both very mature and very you know, pushing the boundaries, you know, the, the cover, not the cover copy, but the, the line on the poster that I wrote was uh, horror, the movies don't dare unleash. Right. And that's what we really wanted to go for and, and try to push the boundaries of the world, the mythology. Um, and uh, and that was the the genesis of of the the comic, which was a pretty high end comic, had a lot of high end names and artwork. 
and uh, you know, really proud of what we were able to, to do with it. I think it's an incredible comic, and I loved going down the rabbit hole of reading what I could find available to me at a at a, at a comic book store in Salem. You know what I'm talking about, DG, yeah. good old Harrison's. <laughs> I'm told there's a lot of Hellraiser uh, comics on Hoopla, uh, the library service that features a lot of comics. If your local library has Hoopla, like a digital uh, borrowing system, uh, I'm told there's a lot of collections of the Hellraiser uh, books on there. Specifically, those or possibly like the Boom Studios or the other licensing, with, with, with like the whole. No, library. I think I think I think it's a lot of the. I mean, there was something in between. Um, there was a, a a publisher, I don't know which, that that collected a lot of the epic stuff into omnibus omnibus uh, editions, and so those may be the ones. But I know there's a lot of the epic uh, uh, work on there uh, in one form or another. So, and it may be the other subsequent ones as well. Last question. Last, last question before we get into the film. How was Clive Barker as a collaborator? I know we've talked about it before, but for the viewers and the new panel, you you cannot imagine a better uh, a better creative collaborator to to work with, especially considering he was, I would say, at the height of his powers or or coming into it. You know, the guy had multiple book deals, multiple film deals, uh, TV things. You know, there wasn't a, a media. Uh, that he wasn't playing in, uh, you know, he was uh, young and and just in multiple places, you know, directing films, producing films, uh, creating comics for multiple publishers. Uh, and he could have been, you know, the worst of the worst, right? He could have yeah. been uh, just totally arrogant and totally, this is my property, this is what you do. Uh, could not have been a more, you know, charming person, uh, twist it in the best of ways <laughs> but uh um but uh just you know even in that that initial idea session i was talking about with that bible you know he could have said this is the rules go and make it happen but he you know he had he had some very definite ideas and knowledge of what hell was about what the cenobites were and what leviathan the big diamond god of hell was but he was also totally into what we were bringing to the table and and it was a just a sort of a leapfrogging conversation and um and his real mandate was i want to unleash this stuff for other people to take it to new places that was what he was really excited about and and he, and over the you know the subsequent years of working with him on that and on nightbreed uh you know running into him at comic conventions or horror conventions and such he just continued to be this just font of ideas and congeniality he was just a great uh collaborator i cannot uh you know i never took it for granted but i also probably just didn't understand how unique that was uh at that time uh to have somebody of that caliber uh being able to you know take your ideas and run with them and then give you other things and say here go play with my toys and uh and have a great time with them incredible now diving into the film I'm going to start with you, wrestling guru. What did you think of Hellraiser 2022? It's a please. I want to hear your take, Richie. It was a definitely a different take. Uh, like it brought me back to the original Hellraiser, minus you know the with its own little twist. And um, as I, was, I just finished up watching it because I started watching it on Friday morning. I just finished up and I was looking at the main bad guy. Well bad guy but the rich guy in the movie right Gorn right. Vizhnik's character most famously played mo who most famously played Dr. Luca on ER yeah. <laughs> no he kind of reminded me of the guy from Spawn ah Jason Wynn you're referring okay I got you yeah, okay. so I mean because like same like I try to compare it to him because wants the power you know wants mm -hmm. all this stuff and it was kind of cute how they, like all Howard Aizen movies, based around the cube. Mm -hmm. But I, I, the only thing I didn't like is there was no, like, I know in the previous Howard Aizen movies, they always gave the history of the cube, like the power behind the it. box, yeah. And this one, they really didn't until the main girl started realizing what he ha she had to do once she broke into the mansion. Very the mansion actually I saw a symbolism for the cube, but we can get to that later on. Brian Gatto with Horror Shark. What did you think of Hellraiser 2022? I think if they make a sequel, it'll be 
Veda definitely have more room to play because there's a lot of things I felt that could have been explored more. Like Richie said, the box and even some of the ways people die, it was like they cut away way too often. If they did a sequel, they should definitely amp up the gore factor. And they're um, going to be left out for number two, not to cut you off, Ryan. Sorry, what? They, they, I felt like they left out for a number two way the movie ended. Agreed. Yeah. yeah the, um, the, I think every kill was off screen pretty much. There was like some showings of it, but there was no like end result of the kill. It was just like cut away. Um, I felt that the characters were kind of annoying. Like I didn't hate them, but they were also very I don't want to say like modern, but I know what you're saying. It was very yeah. 2022. <clears throat> very 2022. It was very much like in that congealed a uh, little bubble where they're like, oh, um, that's a good word. What congealed? I love that word. I love that word. I love congealed. <laughs> <laughs> they're like they're, kind of, <laughs> they're they're like trying to mold these characters out of people like the current generation, and it's like I kind of wanted some more mature characters. Were- I think that was one of the points of the film was to play with some of the characters' naive nature, naivete. I believe the word is. If I'm wrong, sue me. But, <laughs> but we'll get to my take on it later on. Ryan, continue your take. I, if I interrupted you, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, I think the Cenobites, I do like how they weren't revealed right away. It was very gradual in how they revealed mm. them. It wasn't like right away. Um, right. I, I do think that they some of the new rules they came up with were cool, like um, how you have to get cut by the box in order yes. for you to be summoned, um, and that other Cenobites can be affected by it. Um it's not just humans that can be affected by it. Um, well, hell, hell has its own. Hell has a new set of rules. That was one thing yeah. I said while watching it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if it was just what I was watching it on, but the film was very dark. Like, in, in yes, I was no, like, it, it was. Yeah, I was trying. Yeah. I was trying to see certain things, and I was like, I know they're running, but I have no idea where they are. <laughs> Agreed. Jason Pitts, what was your take on the film? Speaking of which, you were, were you a fan of the Hellraiser films, Jason? We never yeah. really talked about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of the Hellraiser films. I really enjoyed one. Um, part two was pretty good, and then, then started- two's out. Two's out there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, there was a lot of stuff about it that I enjoyed. I loved the. I also liked like the CD head guy from part three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the later sequels. Uh, I think the, there was one about some uh, cop. I think Judgment. Hellraiser Judgment. That and Inferno. There's is that the one? Whatever the one with Mayhem from Inferno. the Allstate commercials is 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 interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's like one in the later the later straight to video sequels that I thought was actually really good. But was uh, it the one where um the cop is the main character and he keeps yes. on and he yeah the process and he's and investigating yeah. yeah that's the fifth one Inferno yeah that was pretty good this one um I keep coming back to the thought that it's just uh unreached potential like there's there's so much there to work with um but it just never really got got it never reached its potential um mm-hmm. I, I thought that the uh the character i enjoyed the characters I, I thought the acting was pretty good um i didn't i didn't like that the cube wasn't really a cube all the time you know? it was this weird it could shape into whatever yeah um so that that, that kept pulling me out of it and um uh, like when you think of the Hellraiser, especially like the original, you think of like this gore chains, this flesh ripping, and we didn't get a lot of that. So, no. which was uh, weird because the MPAA rating is like strong, bloody horror, violence, and yeah. gore. And I'm like, this was a little PG 13 for me. Oh, yeah, please, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a guy hanging there who gets ripped apart by chains. You want he's to in, the, he's in the background, guys, P- 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 possibly, like, possibly you know, because you know. P- the- Jeez. Yeah, no, I'm making myself sound like the sadist a on this R. one. A light R at the very least. Agreed, right? Light R. Right, 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 right. right. This is funny. <laughs> it's PG. This is, thir- this is, it's, this is not it's the crowd movie. Yeah. PGR, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It, yeah, PGR. Yeah. Disney's, Disney's version, just full blown chains ripping that, that uh, Trevor. That Disney Yeah. <laughs> 
which I did want to mention one thing is that please and it, it, it's kind of related to Hellraiser, but it's also about movies in general. Is that I feel the MPAA is kind of messing up a lot. Like so, like five years ago, films would be rated R for strong, bloody violence and grisly images. I've noticed a lot of films are like that. And then they got Tamer and Tamer with the same rating. And then I think it was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that came out. And it was like strong, bloody horror events. And it was like everyone loved all the carnage in that. So if we just rate this film like that, people want to go see it. Which Texas mm-hmm. Chainsaw are you talking about? The new one? The newest one. Yeah, the newest one. Which you can see in our review in the archives <laughs> down below. Continue, Brian. I'm sorry. It's all right. And, but that um, had a bus full of people getting massacred. I'm playing the DG card on that. That was not light. That was hard. No, no, it was not, no, it wasn't light. It started. it started with that kind of rating. Strong, bloody horror events and gore. And then they're like, if people watch films that are rated like that, then they'll come see this film, even if it doesn't have all that kind of carnage like the mm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But sometimes the ratings will go just basically on, la- basically on, basically on the language. Sometimes a movie can have two or three F-bombs, and that's an R rating right off the bat. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, the ratings board is so arbitrary. They've always oh, been know. totally arbitrary. It's, it's I mean, all... It's, sorry. I just don't even know. Does it even apply to this? I mean, is this getting a theatrical release anywhere in the... I don't States? believe so. I don't believe so. Oh, Outside yeah. of the United States, it was basically on Disney+, Plus, which is the interesting thing about this film. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, but then... um, it, But it's still got an MPA rating, and it's like... <laughs> Why have that kind of strong bloody horror violence and gore and other than to make it marketable and people would want sure, to see it. Sure, sure, sure. No, that's that's hi true. mom. Hi Denise. How are you? Denise Pitts saying hi to her son, <laughs> award winning filmmaker Jason Pitts. <laughs> DG, what was your take on the film? Very curious given your history with the character in the universe. What was your take um, on Hellraiser 2022? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm of a couple minds on it. Um, you know, I think um, I think it's got a great production design. Uh, you know, overall, it 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 feels right. It looks right. It, it's not a it's not a slapdash, you know, film. There's a lot of great this character design, a lot of great effects design. Uh, the house, as you say, uh, well, I have some logic problems with it. You know, is an interesting uh, set piece. Um, I think the design on the Cenobites is is really strong evolution interesting takes where their flesh is their costume as it were as opposed to you know uh, clive's s m you know clubhouse or something like that uh you know all just like black leather um i think it feels like hellraiser in a, in a good way it feels like a you know hellraiser uh you know one in a lot of ways hellraiser two in a lot of ways it has a great feeling it's striving for that world i i think the filmmakers and the actors uh it felt like they took it seriously you know this wasn't a joke fest this wasn't uh you know let's get some some pinhead quips in there and, and that type of thing uh so uh, you know it feels like something if this was the comic you know i i would have bought as a as a you know an inventory story and interesting that they're trying to advance the rules in different places so i think it fits in that way um, but I got into some problems, much as you guys are, are talking about, just in in the sense of, uh, I would say, the overall logic and likability of certain things. Uh, the characters were wholly unlikable. And, and, Always and, yelling. And, and, yeah. You know, there's, there's nothing there to, to grab onto. I think there's missed potential with uh, the main character uh, where she's set up as an addict and the addiction aspect of it, to me, Jesus, that seems like that's tailor made for the obsession of the the puzzles and the Cenobites, and that wasn't really tapped into a, a lot. And um, and just the, the you know they um, they do introduce that additional sort of layer of how the box and the hell works, where you have to you can sacrifice yourself or others to steps in the in the transformation of the box. Um, but uh, or the puzzle but uh but most of the people who get sacrificed are they they've done nothing wrong or they have they haven't they haven't engaged with it right there it's mm-hmm. almost by chance that things happen to them and yeah like the and brother it, yeah and it doesn't have to be the friday the 13th model where have sex and you die or something like that you don't have to have done something wrong but it seems like they establish that you have to have chosen to do this yes and and instead uh, but maybe not, you know, because maybe that's what the, the the rich guy is doing at the end is saying, I can sacrifice anybody I want to get this thing to solve itself. So I think that's where it trips up for me logic wise. Again, 
who's controlling the solving of the puzzle is it her or is it him you know so i, I just start to kind of you know scratch my head around that a little bit it just got kind of got messy uh, for me and that unrealized potential somebody had mentioned i think that's a really great way of looking at it i enjoyed the movie for what it was worth i enjoyed the first yeah. act of the movie setting up the characters the the realism of the characters her being an addict and you knew you knew trevor was a scumbag right away and i knew i picked it out right away where he knows something where he wouldn't even touch the box yeah you know he was just an idiot you know an idiot. and that's that's you know i mean even though even the whole thing of like it being in the safe and uh and, and you know to me that was the make... box within the box within the box and how deep are you willing to go for right. your reward temptation whatever right. that's what it felt like to me but, but she I... knocks the, she knocks the front off the safe and that bothers me yeah, like me she's too. not she's not a puzzle solver no she's a puzzle breaker she's a puzzle breaker and and, and that should actually have been something that they continued with you, yeah. you know you know in, in the sense of if she was the if she's the sort of person who who breaks a combination by kind of cutting through the Gordian knot, that could have been sort of her superpower in a way to sort of trick the Cenobites and or, or play it out a little bit more. With this, obviously with this review having spoilers, do you feel like that was the filmmaker's oh, intention sorry. at the, no, 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 it's fine. It's not like we're reviewing a movie that's brand, well, I'll, that's a bad joke I was going to make, but do you <laughs> feel like that, that aspect of her being a puzzle breaker was sort of brought in at the end of the film when, she just said, I'll live with the guilt. Do you feel like that no. that could have been an aspect the filmmakers were taking? Because I mean, I feel I felt like that was coming a mile away. She's ultimately gonna say no to all this temptation. Yeah, once the um rich business millionaire once Goran Visionick got the accordion out of his chest, it felt like okay, she's just gonna reject everything. Yeah, yeah, because he had mentioned that whatever they offer is uh they twist it around. They twist the rules. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Jamie Clayton as Pinhead, though. She was pretty creepy. Oh, yeah. She actually did a really good job. Yeah, yeah I thought, great take. Great take. Taking over, the, taking over the role from, well, Paul T. Taylor, who, but <clears throat> obviously. No, Doug, Doug Bradley is. Uh, Doug Bradley is leather is, 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 is hell right. Leather face? Pinhead. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Bradley <laughs> is oh, Wrong movie. <laughs> wrong franchise. No, I think she did great as Pinhead. Oh, she was great. Yeah. Yeah. I could have used more of her. I mean, she was, she Absolutely. was, uh, yeah. it's, it's, I, and that, you know, she, she definitely brought a, I'm not going to say sensual, but maybe, you know, take on it and, and a more studied, intense sort of observational quality to being fascinated by what people would do. Uh, mm. And, and I think there's probably more to be done again with that, that addiction. You could have seen her teasing that out. You know, you know what it's like to want something. You know, you know yes. what it's like to, you know, I'm, I'm. We're, this is what we're offering you. You know, it's a, we're, we're, you've put it in your veins, you put it up your nose, whatever she was addicted to. You, you know, let's let's, ha, yeah, yes. pills. You know, have, pills. have a new experience. You know, bring it, bring it forward and tease it out a little bit more that way. Yeah, um, so, she, so she was just marked. Um, yeah, by, yeah, she was marked, that. which I thought was interesting. One of the one of the shots of the film that I liked specifically was she, when the brother disappears. She takes the pills and she's on the on the. Mm, that was a great scene. One. That yeah. was a great scene. And then when the camera yep. does the pan up, and it almost looks like she is in the box. The whole yeah that box was, well was the, the was the thematic motif of the film. I, I thought it was a fine film. I don't. I didn't hate it at all. Yeah, my my you favorite. Know? My favorite part was probably when they're in the back of the truck and they're driving, and that girl who had like no. Oh character. yeah, yeah, she yeah. Has no character, but she had the best death, I think. Yes, that was yeah. great. How I we, like how because we... when I went to work that night, I was like, I was, I was in the back by myself, and I started feeling like, what if the lights just started disappearing, like in that scene, and then she, I'm just absorbed into this other world. Yeah. It, it oh, we used, to, we used to do that to people all the time where we work was, was like <laughs> flick the lights you know brian i used to work at the establishment down the road from where you work and yeah. we used to do that to <laughs> people turn the lights off and then turn it on dunn would jump out and then i'd pull his arm pull him back and <laughs> oh yeah i have had that feeling many a time yeah, it's, like, it's like a dream almost like she's it's like she's dreaming like she's slipping from a lucidity into a dream and it, it, but it's actually just another under like an unholy place where she's going Right. And I like how it just all turns black. It's not like it's it's, it's not like it's happening in the back of the van a, a, anymore. I mean, it still is, but not in her mind. 
Mm-hmm. And they take over her soul that way. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. I I just thought it was on a scale of one to ten, I'd give it a six point five. I thought it was a fun little movie that I don't know if it would have ripped up the box office though if it was released in theaters. That's the thing. It, it's it, yeah. Clive Barker was a big name in the '90s and '80s, but I still think Barker has a reputation. Well, Would you does. agree with that, right. DG? Well, clearly, clearly, oh, yeah. they're clearly. pushing. They're sure. pushing it as Clive Barker's Hellraiser. They did a big yeah. uh, premiere a couple nights before it came out in, um, uh, you know, on Hulu in yeah. a theater, and he showed up, I guess, for a Q and A afterwards, and you know, the audience went wild. I yeah, mean, I, I, he's. Uh, um, you know, I'm sure he's still a force to be reckoned with. From I mean, you know, he continues to do books and art. He went through a lot of health problems. Matt, I know yeah, at one point. Good to see him back. Yeah, yeah, and so so I mean that sort of obviously derailed his his trajectory. But he's got an imagination like few other people. And um, uh, but but would it have lit the box office up? You know, right now, uh, maybe not. Just again because are people going to the theaters and blah blah blah. Plus, yeah, it's horror not. film. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like if it's a superhero movie, people have no problem watching a two-hour film. But if it's like a horror film like this, I feel like if they go into a movie like that, like oh, it's two hours, I could just watch a superhero movie. I think there's superhero fatigue, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's just my opinion. Yeah, or even like a Jurassic World, like the new one that was like two and a half hours. I'm like, people still went to go see it. Or Tom Cruise. Yes, Tom Cruise. <laughs> or Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, as a director, though, what did you think of some of the production and, and things like that in regards to the film? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, DG. I think the production value was great. great. Um, mm. One of my favorite things about it is our heroine, um, she wasn't the typical final girl, pure. Uh, I mean, the, she's introduced in a scene where she's just getting railed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're playing it simple. The, right. It was introduced through sex. So, um, <laughs> I, I just uh, and then she's popping pills and uh, dealing with alcoholism and and so I, I think that that was a, a very refreshing uh, take on on the final girl girl flipped it on its head you yep. know not, mm-hmm. so um, really? I liked, I really liked that aspect of it and I thought the actress did did a great job throughout the whole throughout the whole film yeah Odyssey Odyssey Odisa yeah. Azion is that how you say her name I'm not sure. My favorite character was the was the boyfriend of the brother. Yeah, I thought he was. I thought that guy, oh, Matt. Matt, I thought he was phenomenal in the yeah, movie. Yeah, even the boyfriend was a good actor too. Yeah, I mm-hmm. thought. I and the way when he got hit with the box, and I'm like, oh, he doesn't deserve it. Like, if any character didn't deserve it, it should have been that was the brother. And then when he didn't get cut, the Cenobite just goes by. Yeah, him. he's like, ah, don't hurt me. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, you but know, the scene, the scene where um she gets in the fight with, with the brother and he tells her to, to leave. Um, I think that's probably my, my favorite, one of my favorite scenes. Very realistic, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. good performances. There, there wasn't a bad acting film. Even Gordon Visionick did fine as the, as that businessman. Yeah. People, when they make, I remember movies and they act like they're fighting, they usually go from yelling to like getting, acting like they're super angry where they're talking. Hmm. But you ever see that? It's like, yeah, out of my house but no people normally just keep yelling and yelling and yelling and that's it was realistic like that but it was kind of annoying at the same time but it's it's still it's also like like dabbled like some humor was dabbled in there like when he's like did you guys just turn the tv down to listen to us <laughs> yeah did you just turn the tv to listen yeah, to us have this good. conversation <laughs> um yeah but the uh what was i gonna say the uh Keep going. I'll remember soon. <laughs> Richie, what did you thought? You thought it was pretty good. Talk to me a little bit more about what your take on the scenery and the production value was. I thought they did a really good job, you know, with the production and the, like the screenplay. Uh, one of my favorite, actually, I have a couple of favorite scenes is um, one of them was when Penhead is talking to the businessman when they first. Fuck you! You do not have to find the gate opens. I take it back. <laughs> I, just, I like that. And um, when the uh, the boyfriend, yeah, uh, uh, Matt. Oh, what happened to Matt? Where is he? You're not telling us. And mm-hmm. he's holding mm-hmm. cube. I don't know. This just happened. 
He like made a, he had a great demise, or was that was the line, or something of that sort. I like how that businessman, um, when he when he's getting that device sticking out of him, he's like, Voight. Throwing, yeah, it's like he's throwing up through his chest. And it's just like nasty. Yeah, yeah I, I as I jokingly good. call it, the accordion through the chest. But that was <laughs> that, that imagery of him just kind of was weird because you see him shirtless, and then he has a shirt and a jacket on, which I was kind of yeah, almost because, from the shirt and jacket he had already had on when it happened. I thought the design of the house was was weird, yeah. but but cool at the same time because it obviously played with the theme of the box. But you know what yeah, was... different lights, you know, changed. I was waiting around. for somebody to come out into the observatory, though. Like if it, it gave me right. a little bit of a clue vibe. That's the only thing. Yeah, you know what this movie really but... reminded me of was uh, Evil Dead twenty thirteen. It struggles with demons and drug addiction. Mm. Yes, I although think I think that's that's takes itself even. More serious. I think that was more successful with the drug yeah. addiction like yeah, angle. You know, yeah. It felt felt more authentic to it. This yes. kind of introduces it, but doesn't play it out as much as it could be. And I the house, I think, TV. you know, Tom is is great and it's great production design, but it also and this is the pro problem, right? You know, you sort of say, Oh, that's pretty good, but then you start to think about it too much. But I just it's you know, they do the six year time leap. This guy's clearly got all the money in the world, right? He's, yep. you know, he's, and, and I'm assuming in that moment where he, he solves the box and he prays the Leviathan and, you know, that's where he got the, the accordion through the chest, you, you know, <laughs> you, you had to wait for six years to find a, a drug addict to kind of yeah, yeah. You know, tease out the box so that because you she was a, marked. Yeah. Well, like, I think why, um, she was marked later in the film. Agreed. But still six his, years. Didn't his secretary like lock the box up? I like, guess, but, kind of but if she, happening, it, she yeah. thought he died, and so she she yeah. sold the estate off, maybe. But yeah. I think that that needed, you know, that needed a beat of some kind. Yeah, I agree. Like, sh shuttering mm -hmm. it up, she says, "Fuck you," you know, Void. You know, I'm selling all your stuff off. But then again, you sold all the stuff off, but this mansion stays there, yeah. you know, for for six years. In, and and he's hiding in the walls. Uh, um, it it um, you know would have been again. Let's rewrite the film for a second. You know if they showed up, and it would be more like a, a, a parasite. You know somebody else had bought the house. Yeah, and they they kind of go in. You know she, the the attics run in, and they're like, you know demons are coming. What the fuck? Or like Amityville in a way. You know I know what you're saying. Right, right. Yeah. But then they could they could have been just you know a uh, uh, you know fodder for the Cenobites. Have them get ripped apart, but then find the guys living in the walls still. I, I don't know. But yeah. Speaking of that secretary, the scene where she's taken, I love how it's set up yeah. like a regular Hellraiser movie. Like, oh, right. she's, it did. It did. This place. she's gonna be wheeled into this place with other people, so she should be fine. But once they leave, you're like, Yep, here it comes. <laughs> yep, yep. The one thing I really missed, and they kept teasing it, and I was like, fuck, you dropped it again. I mean, Christopher Young's score from the originals is just yeah. one of the best horror movie scores Agreed. from that time, certainly. Agreed. And, uh, and they kept teasing the beginning of it, and then they never carried it through. It never they picked it, up. They did that one part where she's reading the book. You can actually did, really get you, you can Does hear it? it? You can hear it for a second. Yeah, yeah for a second. But yes. I want to kind of like... Yeah, it's like, a, it's like two choruses of it, and then it stops. Right, right. I wanted the big play, maybe when... They all show up for the first time. It should have given it that Christopher that. Young, Hellraiser, Clive Barker feel for a split second. I agree sure. with that 100%. Maybe it was just copyright issues, but I doubt it because they did end up using it for... It wasn't even altered, really, so I doubt it. Right, right. Maybe they just didn't feel it was appropriate, you know, in terms of uh, trying to make a break with the past or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. So the funny thing about Hellraiser is its past sequels, which we're not going to dive into them at all. But if you could take Hellraiser into the, this, if you want to call it part two or part 14, whatever you'd like to call it, where would you want to see it go, Jason Pitts? I'll start with you on that one as a, as a pinhead Hellraiser fan. Um, I would like to see like more, more about just how everything works, like the like. The link between the box and hell, and and uh, just like more, more lore and more more explanation. Um, I think I'd focus on that. Agreed, Brian Gatto. What do you think? 
Um, are you asking like if where where, where to place in the timeline of the movies? No, uh, I'm asking where would you take a Hellraiser two? Oh, uh, okay. Um, I would kind of pay homage to Hellraiser three and Hellraiser four's ending and then the beginning. I was gonna say you're going to space. No, no, no. <laughs> like the whole building is a box. Yeah. I, like maybe the inception of the idea and how he came to the Cenobites. Maybe he had sacrifices beforehand. Um. That we, we we only saw one sacrifice at the beginning, so I, I kind of want to see a sequel and maybe even a prequel to really flesh out the box, or even just an opening scene that really fleshes out how he got those other sacrifices. What about Pinhead as a uh, Pinhead's origin? I know that was covered uh, a lot in Hell on Earth, but I'd like yeah. to see how this individual became. As that. long as as long as Doctor Chenard doesn't come in and kill him. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. right. Elliot Spencer. Richie, yeah. what do you think? It's kind of like what you were just talking about, like how how Racer became Hal Racer, hmm. and I think it should pretty much lead up to this movie. How you know he got the box, and it kind of like explain how he got it, and because well, you talked about it a little bit earlier, they already showed how he got the. It went from Kyle, who was the one that got killed at his house, yep. to eight years later, to the main guys now. What about you, DG? Where would you take a number two if you had any creative say? Um, I, I wouldn't go into the Cenobites' origins. I wouldn't go into Pinhead's origin, you know, or the priest, you know, she's called the priestess yeah. or whatever. Um I would leave it alone. I think it's much more powerful and mysterious, you know, to have them be that, you know, we're the whatever the guardians or the guides, you know, to the, you know, the height, the heights and depths of experience and whatever. I would, I, I think the, the interesting things that they sort of introduced in, into this new mechanisms of maybe how the puzzle works, um, you know, that there's these, before it was just called the lament configuration, right? That was just the name of the, of the piece. Now, in that book, there was six six different configurations, right? There was lament, there was leviathan, there was something, something. So many. Yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought that was a really interesting uh, twist, uh, and and I think you have the potential with that. And I'm just showing my roots here. Um, you know, to go in in so many places. You know, Clive was there for that one line where they where they actually said this is about transformation because transformation was the key theme that was in the bible that we wrote right yes. that's really what this is all about is transformation so i think you could introduce better characters i wouldn't go back to fucking her she's useless and you know anybody else who survived i don't want to see more about her she's not that interesting but i think you could have that sense that this puzzle is introduced to somebody else in a situation and just open up a whole new storyline. New uh -huh. characters. Yeah, put new characters. Characters. Agreed. Put, yeah, right. Push it, push it more. The worldly vibe, it. the otherworldly take. Yeah, take it, take it to somebody who's, you know, in a situation who's going after one of these other things. What does it mean to get the power? What does it mean to get this? Yeah, you put know, somebody like her story was kind of concluded in this one. Right, right. Yes. You know, they, I, they, I couldn't see her coming back. She's like you said, she's useless. If there's a part two, you have a new heroine or pro, a new protagonist. And, new protagonist, you know, yeah. and, and and they're and they're exploring something, and they're and and then you've got a chance to introduce these other elements here. There's no there's no character here on the order of of you know Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, who feels strong enough, or or you know Bruce Campbell. This isn't something I need to follow. <laughs> You know them along the way. Yeah, it's not their journey; it's the journey of the world of the box, in a way. The, yeah, yeah, right, right. Plus what does it mean? To... Sorry, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, oh. no, please. Oh, Brian, plus, plus in Hellraiser too, when they uh, revealed their past, they kind of it seemed like they were at not really at peace, but they're like, I don't need to do this. I already know I have a past now. So if they kind of reveal their past in the in a new adaption, like what what would be their point? Like, why, would they, why would they continue doing this then if they know they were human, you know? Right, or they could know that they're human, but they, and they sort of like maybe allude to that, but they're so far beyond it, right? Mm -hmm. They've taken themselves and allowed themselves 
and revel in wherever the hell they are. And they want to introduce you to it too, right? Don't you want to be one of us? Don't you want to experience? Fuck no, but you know, there's, <laughs> but no, but, but to them it's, it sounds great. Um, yeah. Uh, but I don't want to know that, you know, uh, the priestess was a barista, you, you know, at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was frustrated because they didn't unionize and, you know, and whatever. I don't want to know any of that shit. It doesn't matter. Could yeah. you see Gorn, spoiler alert, could you see Gorn Vishnik coming back with that almighty power that you see in the final scene? I thought that was interesting yeah. how basically he's in hell and he he, he gets born again. Like an, He right. looks like an angel with the mechanisms on him. Yeah, that was the I, that was the thing. I'm like, he is being reborn as the almighty power, but it's like, I thought if you were gonna have a Doug Bradley cameo, that could have been it. That was just saying. I wasn't holding on hope, but I was like, that, that that's the moment. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, Plus, right, right. Like, what was, what power does he have other than being reborn? That's know? the thing. What is their definition of power? What's the yeah. what's, How did they loop the rules? Yes, yeah, so that could be even like explored in the sequel and have Voight come back. Well, that could simply right, and that could simply be you know you now have the power of like his interpretation of power was probably based upon being a really rich guy and wanting even more. But their definition of power is something like, that's else. A trick to hell, right? You get to share now the experience with others, um, and that's powerful in its own right. Yeah, but he his design it was like on the metal gears and everything. It made him look like he was an angel, which was very symbolic of what he said earlier in the film where he's yes. like they're, they're angels in the Jason audience. Pitts I saw you have a thought what do you got uh, I was just going to say I, I took it as like he was just becoming a, another Cenobite that right. too he exactly. was being reborn yeah. into that yes exactly yeah. yep the angel Cenobite <laughs> well that's that's just their take on hell I mean you know when you say hell to other people there's multiple interpretations some people think of you know like Richie said earlier the spawn universe or you know there, the, the the Marvel hell, the biblical hell, some hell, you know, Lucifer, the Lord of Light. It's just, I mean, look how good the Conjuring universe did, uh, just based off yeah. Of one movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, based off a lot of stories and one movie, but still. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 not in conclusion of this, but I have recommended Hellraiser 2022 to to some people. They're like, "Did you like sure. it? What did you think?" I said, "Yeah, go watch it for two hours." I know Godzilla won't watch it because he, he thinks all Hellraiser was stupid. And I said, "Well, you're missing mm -hmm. out on a on a good little film." That's what I attributed to it. it. Was a good little film that you'll enjoy if you if you are curious of that universe. If if this is successful, and I, and I hope it is, I think likewise poured. Like I said, I think it's a very serious film. I think they put real effort and energy into it. It doesn't feel like a like a money grab. It doesn't hold up on the Hulu screen up against, say, Prey. You know, the mm -hmm. Predator. You, you know, reboot. It's not. It's Great not film. there. But, um, but I think, uh, you know, one of the things that's missing from it that would be interesting if they actually explored it more was how s skeevy and disturbing the first Hellraiser is. More so, and I'm not just talking about the gore factor, uh, you know, think about that. That uncle is disgusting, yeah. right? The uncle yeah, is like, he's you know, coming and back. Everything. Yeah. He's coming back to, to hit on, you know, the woman he's having the affair with. He's, he's, you know, he's perving on his, his niece. You know, there's a whole yeah. weird Easy. other level of. Yeah, Uncomfort there's an uncomfortable, like icky feeling dynamic to that. Right. He's more disturbing than the friggin' Cenobites are. Agreed. Right? Yeah. And, and yeah. so that's something I think you want to find. That the stories uh, can I, I think reveal they, more. I think they kind of tried to do that in this one with the with with the rich guy, but it's just like being rich bit. doesn't necessarily mean you're like like Little that bit. guy, like evil and stuff like yeah. that. But, right, like he, right. Like when he's walking into the Coliseum or whatever it was, the big room. Yep. And, and he walks by, and you can see like an orgy in one room, and people are yeah. drinking. That's right. 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 Yeah. 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 Right, it's a, it's a. It seems yeah, like right. that eyes wide shut sort of thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good analogy. The eyes wide shut, but the, like that side was sort of tamed, and I. It's probably because of Disney or licensing fees. They don't want to go that, yeah, creepy, dark, uncomfortable, SVU type thing. Right, right. <laughs> but that's not even you know that's a lifestyle thing, right? That's and and okay, people are having sex and they're having orgies or whatever. It's not, it's not necessarily disturbing no in, in its own way um and and him just being a rich prick okay we gotta 
a billion rich pricks, yeah. you know, <laughs> in our world at any given moment. True. But he needs to have something more. More. He, need, he, his cat, he needed something more. Yeah, right. you can't just throw a red light on an orgy and be like, yeah, he's... And that's why I thought of the bad guy from a spawn. He wanted mm. more. Mm. Yeah, you get... You, I like that, Richie. You gave it that Jason Wynn yep. vibe, except Goran Vizhnik and Martin Sheen. It's tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I liked it. If you had to rank it on a scale of one to ten or four stars, what do you give it? I give it two and a half. Richie? I'll, I'll give it about three. Horror Shark? Uh, 2.5 out of five. Jason Pitts. Uh, three out of five. Dan Chichester. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with the two and a half out of, out of five. Yeah. Enjoyable. Definitely. You know, it's it's on there. You got Hulu. Watch it. You, you know, yeah. it's there. It's not a time waster. It's not a time waster. You're going to get some good stuff out of it. And um, but may not be something you return to. But if it helps, like I said, move it forward, that, that that'd be great. It'd be great okay. to see more more from that team. I think I might try to watch it again on a, on a. I watched it on my phone because I had no time to go. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't even. I, I watched it on my computer. I confess that I watched it right where I'm sitting. Yeah, I couldn't True. sit down on, on my computer because of this. So I was yeah. just like, oh mm. well, let me just watch it on my phone. And my phone has terrible lighting, so it's like when I was watching the dark scenes, they were really dark. Well, I think we lost Mr. Chichester, but um, he'll be back in a second. I have a feeling. Unless um, he really got offended wanna, by that. But I did like um, towards the end of the movie. Um, after he got the like organ or whatever out, out of him, and you can see all his body start like healing. And he's like he's like all excited. He gets the chain right through him. Yeah, you see like him. He got that, that was one thing I I agree. I liked that moment of bliss. He got the 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 contraption or the accordion out of his chest. Ha ha ha! I'm like you know he's just gonna get screwed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you see him been taken up to the light. Although what I don't get is when he is up there. And he's being transformed into an angel centipede or whatever. Is there still a hole in his chest? I don't think there was. No, the hole was cured. They you see you see the intricacies, uh, the the spine. Yeah. yeah, it's stitching. Oh up. yeah, that's right, that's right. I remember that. But he then he got impaled again with the chain. Yeah, that was a great year. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't see that when he was getting transformed. Yeah, that that healed once the chain left. That yeah, healed. He did that again. That's how <laughs> many how many different configurations of the box? Did it have to go through? Six. There were there were six. six in the in this new rule book. You know, there right. were like so there are six. Yeah, right. When, when she got it, it was back to one, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. because she that's, was. That's chosen. the part I don't get. Is yeah. she, she started it, right? Yeah. And it went through like at least one of the transformation before you know with the uh, the guy he sacrificed at the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's at least step one. Yeah, so when she got it. It's back to it's back to one. Mm -hmm. Right. The the, oh, the steps on it now are much more like a ring, you know, type of yeah. structure. Because if you're an idiot and you solve the puzzle, you know, the first configuration or whatever, and you just stab yourself, you're screwed, right? Yes. Yeah. Like they're yeah. just they're just gonna come and get you. You know, hey. <laughs> um ah. but if if you if you know what you're doing and you're actually after something, you're after one of those steps, mm -hmm. then you're sacrificing purposefully. Oh, other people for the blade to come out and then you got to do the ring thing of like stab you and you and you to kind of get to the level of power that you think you're going to or you know gift that you think you're going to get uh, which is interesting right and that's 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 kind of what Voight was trying to do through you know several steps removed but that would be a really interesting story if somebody was more direct at doing that and you were following them and maybe they were doing it for a reason that felt good, just, even in a way. Good or justified? Well, kind of, right? You know, like I'm trying to save my daughter, you know, yes. or something like that. And you know, you know, you've you've gone down every other avenue. And you, this is you, something that you think is justified. You're going to use them for your. It's. It, I know what you're saying. You're going to use the rules to your advantage, right? And of course, we'll that'll them. be twisted it'll be, up. And it would be kind of cool if they. Did a sort a story with um a gain or like a crime, and that person the person no. is like the victim of it all. Yeah, you mm -hmm. go after them with this puzzle box. Oh, do yeah, like a, that would uh, be cool. Like a pumpkin head vengeance type thing. Yeah, yeah. pumpkin head vengeance, yeah. Charles Bronson type. Like that, that would be Richie. really cool. That'd that would be, be excellent. That'd be a new twist on it. <laughs> right, right. Like and something. Then, yeah, um, yeah. 
That would be Although awesome, I would, actually. I would love to see one part where they solve the box and the blade misses them, and then it just ruins everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. That'd be funny. Let's write it, Brian and DJ, I I, Jason. Yeah. I guess it just wasn't clear to me on, like, when does the box reset itself? That's um, after it cuts somebody. It's a, yeah. Well, I mean, when does it change? What I understood is, like, every time it cuts somebody, it goes to a, the next configuration well that's yeah. the, the, that's the logic thing jason right yeah. that gets back to who is who is leading this one because right. if it's mm-hmm. if it's void doing it it's his steps and he doesn't know it's his steps oh tom solved the puzzle box um <laughs> and uh then it 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 should stay in the sequence of wherever he wants to go but if exactly. you were to pick it up for the first time and now you're in control of it it should be it starts Back to the, the square. Person. In this story, when she got it, he it like, was a square. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a box, mm-hmm. right? But it was still his thing that he was trying to accomplish. Yeah, that, yeah. I see what but you're box saying. Yeah. Yeah. To step one, because right. the assistant's like, "Hey, it shouldn't like that's not it's the, it's it's the wrong configuration. Yeah. yeah, it's not how I left it. Right. Exactly. Right. So I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, that, I would think a little bit more like Jumanji. You know, mm-hmm. with the yeah. game. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe they um like maybe he had done more sacrifices before and then that, that one that that's the problem with the six year window he had to have yeah, he, 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 he had to have because yeah. Yeah. If, if step one is the box when when the guy he sacrificed at the beginning got it it was elongated yeah, yeah that was right that was it went through the whole that was the price the he got yeah Diamond maybe that was, was the right. last one that they were trying to see maybe that was the last sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Um, or the second to last, or whatever. That's why he was looking up and saying, "I want." No, that that was the last one because that's when he got his prize. I'll get my prize, I mean, right? And that that's the kind of thing that could have been solved with one line, right? Yes. You know, you're, yeah. you know, he could he could have dismissed them when they show up. Like you think you know what you're doing. I've done this mm-hmm. fifty times in the last six years. You know, to like through to people like you. You're just the latest in the in the long line of of you know people that I've used to my own ends. Ha ha ha. Yeah. And, yeah. That's a good, um, better storyline, and that would have given his character a lot more of a sadistic backstory, mm-hmm. which is right. that line, right? Right. Not right. I've been living in the walls for six years, kind of like, yeah, right. Putting my was suits he, on. Wasn't was he whole... paying her? Wasn't he paying her boyfriend to kind of orchestrate the whole thing? Yeah, yes. yeah. That was yeah. And but like it was thing, unexplained. If... Her though, that was the thing. She's marked. Yeah. Right. But if you've yeah. got all that money, <laughs> you could do better than than hiring you know the sleaze bag boyfriend right yeah to, to, yeah to get to that one thing i don't uh, get is how come if he's done this so many times if he did it more than the six times that he was for that one power um, right then why isn't he showing more signs of injury or pain or pleasure or power it's just that one thing that went through him so you're right it, yeah it probably just was like well, he got to the sixth one and he got his prize and then he wanted another prize to get that thing out of him Mm-hmm. But that's the problem mm-hmm. we're saying is why why would he settle for settle for hiring Trevor mm-hmm. the dumb delivery man? <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't get why he let her take the box when they opened the thing. He's like, I sh- I was supposed to take it, but then she takes it and he doesn't take it back. He was scared of it. Yeah, but it was his job to take it. <laughs> well, we all do things at our job we're not supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> yourself <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> no i always follow the i always try to follow the rules <laughs> hey you know it had if that's the job if the movie did its job and made us ask questions it did a good Absolutely. job then. yeah mm-hmm. no there, there's an interesting enough to have you ask those questions it wasn't yeah. you know it, it wasn't it, it's peculiar and strange and you're sort of like well what does that mean that could be interesting but it it, it would be even better if it had been Again, I'm using Prey, which I loved a lot, you know, as a comparison. Which Prey felt was like, great. Prey was holy really shit. Good. You advanced that thing. You went in the past. You, you advanced the story, and everything felt, to me at least, extraordinarily tight. You yeah, know, and the, and the and the the callbacks were like spot on. You know, when it went to the you know, if it bleeds, we can kill it. It was like fuck. Yes, you worked that line. In. <laughs> you worked the line in. Yeah. In Cherokee, I love no, Prey. Or the, or the, you know, I love Prey. Did you watch the, the dubbed version, DG, or did you watch the English no, version? No, I watched the English version. I pray, I did both just to see what it was like. It, it was phenomenal. Right. Prey was great. I love Prey. Yeah, it was. Prey was I, awesome. Yeah. It was good right. to see Predator and Hellraiser and Leatherface get advanced here in 2022. Exactly. Yeah. Look at that. Well, in Halloween. 
Yeah. And Jer- uh, Jerry's still out on Halloween. Well, I was going to say end screen, but I think technically that came in out in December. <laughs> no, <not> in January. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw Jason Voorhees a little advanced in 2022. Correct, bit, Jason. Yeah. We saw it advanced. I yeah. liked it. Not just me, though, man. There were so many fan films that were really good. So mm-hmm. many. So uh, many. Have you seen Vengeance 2 yet? I have not. I, I have the link on uh, my saved in the Facebook. I plan on watching that one of these nights. Do you guys get a chance to see Jason Rising? I have seen Jason Rising. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was really good, I thought. That's actually, I think that's the only fan film of Jason I have that's on Blu-ray that I have. I need what, about Blood of, what about Blood of Thorn? Are you going to have that on Blu-ray when it comes out? Can you put it on Blu-ray? I'll figure. I'll find a way. I'll buy it. <laughs> find a way. I'll find a way. I'll sign a copy. He's going to solve the puzzle boxes. He's going to and ask He's going to go to the uh, the Blu-ray configuration. Yeah, Tom, I gotta, I got, I've got to go. Um, like do a puzzle box for dinner. So, um, uh, likewise, I, want, I gotta, I gotta bail on you. But, uh, guys, it's great seeing everybody. You too. Likewise, DG. As always, check out DG's weekly newsletter, StoryMaze.substack.com, and the shout out. Keep following his Facebook page, DG Chichester Writer. And hopefully, next time we talk, DG, you have a few more things you can tease. We'll see. We'll see. Plus, I have a funny story I want to tell you someday later on. But that's a, it's a, it can wait. It can wait. All right. All right. We'll work it out then. Take care. Take it easy. Take it easy, DJ. Yeah. Uh, His newsletter is phenomenal. Yeah. He's he's working. Yeah. You've checked it out, Richie. Yeah. A couple times. Actually, really good. Have you subscribed to it? Have you received the, the Hellraiser Bible? Not yet. I did. It was awesome. Yeah. I would definitely recommend any of DG's work. Uh, one of my favorite comic book writers of all time, his Daredevil run, Nick Fury. Now diving into his pinhead take on Clive Barker. See, Great one thing I did like about Hellraiser, not to cut you off, Tom. Oh, go ahead. Was you saw her evolution as Hellraiser throughout the movie? Agreed. You saw her like with not a lot of pens at the beginning, and towards the end, she's covered in the pens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, like- I go ahead, Brian. No, that's fine. I was just going to say, I like the new Cinebite designs, especially the one... I can't really even tell what it is. It has, like, tubes coming out of the side of its head, its jaws, like, missing or something. Yeah, that was weird, man. That was that something... Was yeah, that the makeup design, the costume design, I thought, on this particular piece were top-notch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 miss, I miss the leather. Uh, yeah. I wasn't a fan of the new... Like, from the neck down on everybody, I wasn't a fan of... Yeah. So I, thing I, I, I miss the leather. <laughs> Leather's yeah. great. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like about the Cinnabites is they got rid of their second most popular one in this movie. It's like, why would you do that in the second, in the first movie? Yeah. I don't want to spoil who, but... No, I know who you're, ta- I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Well, before we all part ways, what are we all working on right now? Jason Pitts, what can you talk about, about Batman, Heart of Ice, oh and your next film God, projects? I am doing so, so much. Uh, just, uh... Last this, like two days ago, filmed uh, my part as Mister Freeze in Batman: Heart of Ice. Have one more day of filming. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're a fan of the animated series, um, that story, um, the Heart of Ice story, which is one of the most popular um, animated Batman stories, um, then you'll love love this film. And um, in post production on my next short film, When the Stairs Creek, um, we have a premiere, in person premiere on November fourth, and then shortly after that, we'll have an online premiere here on this channel. And um, that's right, yeah, we are hosting the online premiere of uh, When the Stairs Creek. Brian, you're going to have to help out on that one. And sure. uh, myself and Bailey will both be here for it. Excellent. Uh, who plays the lead in it? And um, at the end of October, I am uh, assistant director on a film, uh, supernatural horror film called Enthralled. Um, it's a feature film, and and then we are doing we're shooting Voorhees two in November. It's not a full feature; it's just a short uh, ten to fifteen minute follow up um, uh, to to Voorhees Night of the Beast. We're calling it Voorhees After the Beast. Love it, and it kind of bridges a little bit more uh into jason goes to hell love it and um and that's that's oh in 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 march we're shooting lonely echoes 
So my, my plate's full. We're, we're, we're moving along pretty good. Got I, we always appreciate you coming on bad for your health, though. I, always Man, appreciate I, I really appreciate your support. Anytime. Anytime. Brian, what have you got working on? What are you working on now? Um, so I haven't been doing YouTube too much because I've been so busy at work, but I do want to plan to get some videos out before the year's over and then uh, just do a video every day next year uh, from January to December 31st. But Whoa. yeah, I got I to gotta really try to crack down on that and get videos done ahead of time. I'm also working on books. So I'm almost done with my third book for Raven Tail, and I'm going to have my fourth book started shortly after that. Excellent. Awesome. Richie, what do you got work? What are you working on now? I've just been watching a lot of old wrestling. Uh, watched the pay per view last night. Agreed. Um, the, the Extreme Rules was last night, and definitely was better than what I expected it to be. With no real, a lot of title matches. Um, all that just catching up on uh, some old horror movies and all that is. Doing your thing. Yeah. What, was your, what was your favorite match from last night? Uh, it was either the Riddle Seth Rollins, the fight pit match, mm-hmm. or the six man tag in the beginning. Between Sheamus and uh, the Brute versus Gunther and uh, Imperial. Now, my question is, and I'm a little lapsed on wrestling, is Sheamus like full blown over now, like face? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, because he started feeling with Gunther and. Yeah, that 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 match with Gunther, people went ape sh- crap over it. You could say it went ape shit. I, I read the reviews. Pretty much turned, it pretty much turned him into a face instantly. Unreal. And and I was at that SmackDown this past Friday. Were you there? Were you there? Yep, I actually I was on the TV twice. Nice. You yeah, but you, watch you, that. I actually was wearing this shirt. Um, <laughs> you can see me up in the corner. I was up in the balcony. You can see my shirt. And I had my um, my two nephews. Yeah, one of their friends up there, and you can see me and the friend. Did you throw them up? Did you throw up the horns? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, where it was Gunther versus Sheamus, and they literally picked up where they left off at the paper, that fallen people, uh, the last pay per view. Incredible. Now, the next one is Crown Jewel, right? Where Logan Paul will wrestle yeah. Roman Reigns? Yep. Yeah, okay. Logan Paul is in Western. Everyone booed him. Everyone booed Logan Paul. Oh yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> That's all I got. I, I I could see people booing him. Yeah, I, I can too. But just like, I'd see it more fifty fifty though. I'm sure Roman got a nice yeah. pop. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. What about Sammy? Did he get a pop? Logan, oh, yeah, Sammy got a pop. Uh, uh, even Solo Sonoko got a huge pop. I cannot believe Sammy. Sammy's getting over with this stupid gimmick. <laughs> I thought it works because the whole conspiracy gimmick. Was I thought crazy. he was annoying. I thought Sammy was so annoying. Oh yeah, he a few was. years ago when he was Intercontinental Champion, but now it's like Sammy's playing that nitwit lackey so yeah. well. Did you guys see that somebody even changed his Wikipedia page to put <laughs> their the the Samoan right. last name? <laughs> <laughs> Sammy got uh, over it. Weird it's times. It's crazy. 2022. Yeah, yeah. It's 2022. That's all we can say. I will say that Logan Paul really impressed me with his match against The Miz. Man, that was an awesome match. Yeah, it was. Really Even was. the match at WrestleMania, too. The tag team match will yeah, be really yeah, good. I mean, tag team, like, I can see like him being carried through that. But when it's a one-on-one match and it's all on you, he did phenomenal. I yeah. I wasn't a full believer until that until that match. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy he's with WWE. He signed the contract and all that. Well, it was either that or fight Mike Tyson. Right? Wasn't that the rumor? Yeah. They were going to do Logan Paul and Mike Tyson. I was just sort of like, oh, this that would not end well for Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that we got together to talk Hellraiser. Uh, Absolutely, man. I'm glad you invited me, and I'm glad I was able to make it. As always, a lot of you guys have free reign. I hope to the next big show we got coming up is going to be the Hel- the Halloween three season of the witch fortieth anniversary in a couple of weeks. Who's in? Who, let's get let's try to get a head count now. Yeah, I know I'm in. I know when, you're in. Richie. When are you doing it? Two weeks, possibly. Two weeks from today. Yes. The twenty third. I should be able to make it. Happy, happy Halloween, Halloween. <laughs> hey, can we? Uh, but. 
can we schedule our when the Stairs Creek premiere? Absolutely. When do you want to do it? You said anytime after November, and November is clear. Time after November fourth. Where's the calendar? Yeah. Uh, you want to do it on the fifth? Remember, remember the fifth of November. Sounds good to me. Okay. Brian, you in November fifth? Yeah. Wait, let me just see what day that is, real quick. It's a Sunday. Yeah, oh, I could do it after work. No, it's That's Saturday. November That's a Saturday. Uh, November the fifth. Uh, yeah, I could do it a Saturday night. Hang on. No, I can. Hold on, just a minute. Supposed to do that. What is that? Emergency. Oh yeah, we can't do it on the fifth. Dang it! Uh, because he's doing that. I'm doing that. You're doing that. <laughs> um, what about the sixth? That is a Sunday. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. We'll have to do it a little early because I have to be in bed by like six. I'm in. Okay, cool. We're in. Sunday it is. And then we're so, also we're also going to try to get Halloween Blood of Thorn out by October thirtieth. Oh wow! Yeah. Hey, have yeah. You, you're not done filming it yet. Nope, I got one more day to film. Oh, you got you're going to bust your butt editing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I'll also sign autographs now. We're going to try to manage. It's not going to be a big featurette or feature. It's only going to be maybe twelve minutes, but. I got the itch talking to you, Jason. I got the itch talking to so many people, and I'm just going to can't wait to see it, man. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be something. I don't think it's going to rock the rock the boat, but I think it's going to be something. It's different. Yeah. I think you've never really seen a black hey, and man, white so Halloween film. You, but let me t- it doesn't matter. Like just completing it is something to celebrate. It doesn't. Agreed. Matter. Agreed. We've it, already talked about what we're going to so do. Hard to make these films. <laughs> I almost I used to do it when I was like eighteen or nineteen, and I had a lot more time on my hands. Now, at, at you know, I'm, you know what it's like working full time, and this was like, holy crap! This is it's a lot harder than people realize. It's a lot harder than people realize. Even filming the chill two last year with Brian, that was a, a couple of days of just pure nonstop work. Correct, Brian? Yeah, it was about probably about I want to say six eight hours in one day, and then a couple hours the next day. Yeah, it's it's just it's your nose to the grind doing doing the movie. Uh, in closing, I want to thank DG Chichester. I want to thank you, Jason Pitts, the Horror Shark, and Richie Richie, the Wrestling Guru. Always, I'm glad to talk to you guys about everything under the sun. Next week is going to be a little interesting. I don't know if we're going to do Halloween ends or a review of Monster Expo because I'm attending Monster Expo next week in Taunton, Mass where it's going to be Mark Patton, Beatrice Bopley from Nightmare 2 and Nightmare 5, Erica Anderson, they're all going to be there. There's CJ Graham from Friday the 13th Part 6. So I don't know if I'll do a quick review of that. I don't know I don't know what's coming next week, but I know in two weeks will be the Halloween 3, 30th anniver- 40th anniversary episode, and then maybe the 30th will be the review of Ends on top of the uh, Blood of Thorn sequel which as dave adams described is black rain meets halloween five (laughs) (laughs) uh but november we're gonna do when the stairs creak but that's the big thing is halloween three will be the next big episode we'll see if i can get dg back or anyone else i'll have to rewatch it i haven't watched it in 20 years (laughs) <laughs> the the funny thing about this one is this is going to be one where we're not all unified. I know so oh, many yeah. people <laughs> uh, hate that film. It is, right, a divisive, it is a divisive movie, and I want that. I want a little, I want something that's so Brian. Where do you fall on the camp of Halloween three? We never talked about it. I think it's decent. Okay, to you're, be you're, continued. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> that's the plan. And as always, don't forget to check out Still Dead Illustrations. For some of the best artwork I've ever seen, I'll sh- I keep sharing her posts on Facebook. Don't forget to check out Jason Pitts's Facebook page for uh, Lonely Echoes, the Indiegogo, everything that you've got. And don't forget to continue watching Voorhees, Night of the Beast, ripping up YouTube with 327,006 views wow. since it dropped. Wow. As That's- always, go ahead. <laughs> Less than four months. It's crazy. Incredible. Incredible. I still rest, enjoy it. I watched it again not long ago. I really did. I've watched it about three times already. Wow. Twice for me. Yeah. For the esteemed panel, I'm Tom. Tune in next week for a brand new episode of Bad for Your Health Entertainment. Have a good night, everyone. See you soon. Adios. <laughs>